Ramanujan was an astonishing mathematician who left behind thousands of mathematical formulas. He was a two-time college dropout who was born in South India in the late 19th century. He believed that his goddess, a Hindu goddess named Namagiri, he believed that Namagiri would just offer him formulas as gifts, which he ended up recording in his notebooks. Ramanujan, he might as well have been living in a desert. Nobody around him understood anything that he wrote down. So in desperation, he ended up writing some of the most distinguished mathematicians in Western Europe. And one of these mathematicians was G.H. Hardy. Hardy discovered together with his colleague, John Littlewood, that Ramanujan had to be a genius, at least a genius in terms of imagination and creativity. So Hardy arranged for the most extraordinary fellowship to attend perhaps you know, one of the two or three best universities on the planet, Cambridge. But over time, Hardy began to see that Ramanujan truly was someone who could make fundamental advances to how mathematics should be done. Hundreds of his formulas have ended up serving as prototypes for theories that the mathematicians of the 20th and 21st century have gone on to develop. The study of black holes, mathematics of the internet, even in mathematics that power your phone. How he intuited these formulas, I don't know and how he anticipated what the future of mathematics and physics would be is beyond me. There's a spiritual element to all of that. What if Ramanujan had not written out to Hardy? Or what if Hardy had not responded and noticed glimpses of genius in that first letter he wrote? Well, that's a, a world I cannot fathom. The future of society depends on good science. We need those minds that propel science forward. We're not short of people who can solve differential equations that are taught at, at the best schools. What we are short of are the next generation of Einsteins, Newtons, and Ramanujan. Genius cannot be taught. It can only be nurtured. The spirit of Ramanujan Math Talent Initiative is a global search. We had this idea, the strong belief that genius exists and resides all over the world, that we should use the story of Ramanujan to search for this talent. Young people with great promise, they are often outliers. They're often so, so far ahead of their classes that, that the teachers don't know what to do with them. We want to be the hardy for, for those brilliant students who are working in isolation. It's our way of paying forward the wonderful things that have happened to us. If you slide this loop down just a bit, you end up with a shape like this. And then you can untwist that loop right there. I was always a studious kid. I liked school and math. It, it, I didn't feel one way or another about it. I considered myself to be more of a humanities person, and in the ninth grade, when I had my first class with Catherine Sosha, it was really interesting, and the types of math that we were doing, I really enjoyed doing combinatorics with her. You can tell when somebody brings a kind of joy to their work. There's a willingness to fail, to be wrong, to try again, to persist. When I do math, I'm doing it because I want to solve the problem. When I was in Catherine's class, the point wasn't to learn math so that you could get an A in the test. The point was to understand a new concept and see the world in a different way. Kendall really seems to have enjoyed puzzling things out for herself. She does not want to be told the answer. She doesn't want to be told a solution strategy or given lots of hints. I had her work through a set of classical problems in graph theory for yeah. two months on an impossible problem, and she did it. She worked every day on this problem for two months. And then finally, with a few guiding questions from me and from some of my colleagues, she proved that it was actually impossible, and that's delightful. It was two months. It's a really long time. 
I would take some time in class and work on it by myself. I'd work a little bit at home. I just kind of wanted to see what the answer was. That's remarkable for a young student to persist so long on something that they don't know how to do and to try different strategies rather than to, to spin their wheels over and over and over in the same strategy. That works great. Under, this also works. I think math is beautiful just in the idea that you can use it as a means of exploration and discovery of the world around you. And in terms of understanding how you as a person solve problems, that it's, it's even a method of self-discovery. And I would argue that that's really crucial to somebody's development. I love the satisfaction of finally finishing a problem after so much hard work. Math is probably the most pure subject out of all of the sciences, and that really interests me. Everything is all logical, and it's easy to understand once you get the concepts. So that's what drew, drew me to math in the first place. It's everywhere in nature, all around us. The golden ratio, Fibonacci sequence, everything is always interconnected. There's always something left to learn. There's always something left to know. And just the way that there's no end to it. So I first met Dean in my advanced math class here at Emory. This little boy is sitting in the front seat, that's you three years ago, it's not like you're very big yet, next to your mom, and your, your, your legs are swinging under the seats like that. And I started lecturing, I think about um, Fermat's last theorem, no, Fermat's little theorem, I think. And as is typical in a class that I would teach, I'd like to ask questions of the class, right? The class wants to participate. But within 15 minutes, like nobody wanted to participate, which is unusual for my class, because Dean is answering all the questions. Who is this boy whose hands go up immediately answering all the questions? So that's how I first met Dean. And uh, I've never seen anything like that before in my life. And I've been a professor for almost 30 years. An answer means like it's done. And it implies that there's nothing else to be done. But there's always something else to be done. So I think a question is way more important because even if it's not answered, it can lead to many other, many other important theorems, like the Riemann hypothesis, just a question, hasn't been answered yet. What he exhibited there is more than youthful enthusiasm. It's the ability to see where the research leads, which is the kind of questions that, that I'm trying to ask to cultivate my students. And he was basically on fire then, and he still is. Ramanujan defined this function called delta, which is equal to q times this infinite product one minus q to the end of the 24th. I'm the son of a mathematician. And so as a young boy, I didn't know that there were any other occupations other than being a mathematician. Mathematics, I view it as being much closer to poetry and, and music. And what we look for are patterns in numbers, which often end up becoming the model for patterns in the universe and that deep intricate structure makes you have to believe that there's something very spiritual going on underlying how the universe and how numbers are required to behave. By the time I was in middle school, I actually didn't really like mathematics. It seemed like a chore. I didn't become passionate about mathematics almost until my early 20s. In graduate school, in the early 1990s, a book came out called The Man Who Knew Infinity. It's a great book about the Ramanujan and I fell in love with the story. Ramanujan is, he's a legend of mathematics. He created all of his formulas all on his own and that really inspires me because if he can do it, maybe I can aspire to be some and create stuff and some of the things that he did, like in number theory. The experience of sort of moving forward and accelerating my track in mathematics has led me to believe that Challenging yourself is more important than taking the easy road. We don't manufacture genius. Society can only lose genius because geniuses tend to be outliers, people who don't fit in. And I think the programs such as the Spirit of Ramanujan will go some way to first detecting genius and then nurturing these, these young students all over the world so that they know that their gifts can be potentially put to good use in the future.